Hello, welcome to Sports Scene. I'm Tracy Holmes in Beijing. It's been a travel to My name's Tracy Holmes. Basically. I'm from Australia. Uh, we've been living in China for almost a year now, and at the moment I'm working for China Central Television, and uh, in particular um, anchoring their sports programs. Coming up, true belief, new head coach Jose. Tracy Holmes has spent more than 20 years in the media industry as a presenter, specialising largely in sports. She began her career with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation and was appointed the first female host of its national sports program, Grandstand. This is the second time Tracy has joined CCTV News. The first time was in 2005, three years before the Beijing Olympics. The studio seems really quiet, you know, but actually you can hear everything that's happening in the control room out here. You can hear the director calling shots, when to roll camera, when to jump to the next tape telling me when to stand by, giving me a countdown during the ad break. So it's, it's quite busy in your ear. Always radiant and confident in front of the camera, how is this TV presenter off screen? My husband, Stan, works for CNN and uh, he's the senior correspondent at the Bureau here in Beijing. Our youngest son, Jesse, lives with us and goes to the Western Academy of Beijing, which is an international school. It's our second time in China. We also lived here in 2005, 2006, and we lived in Hong Kong, China, three years before that. And before I go to work, I like to check a couple of websites to see what news has happened overnight uh, in sport and news generally. This is the ABC, yeah, Contact Sport. That same bloke does it that does, yeah. So I'm going to be listening to stories here on the BBC and my husband's listening to stories here on the TV and I've got the newspaper here. You just wish you had, you know, six ears and six eyes so you could do everything at once. <laughs> oh, Bye, darling. Love you. Love you. Hey? Uh, 9.15. Love you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Have a good day. Bye, Jess. Love you, darling. Love you. Okay, have a good day. Okay. Bye. 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 Today is a Sunday, so going to work is, it's not too bad. There's not so much traffic early in the morning. It's about 9.20 now. So maybe it'll take about half an hour, but some days it can take more than an hour. Stay home. Sleeping. No, my uncle <laughs> Uh. <laughs> you see, Ma Jia. Ma? Ma Jia. Ah, Ma Jia. I thought you were talking about Mr. Ma. Before the Beijing Olympics in 2008, you know, every now and then there'd be some stories about China inside, you know, maybe on the sports pages. These days, China is on nearly every page. <laughs> and even on the front page here, there's a story about China and sport. This is a global newspaper, so it's fascinating. And I have, I have so many contacts in this book. I've actually got several books with, uh, you know, just numbers and numbers and numbers that I've been collecting over the years. So uh, I can always find people. Be careful, I can find you. <laughs> uh, CCTV News, the channel that I work for, is, is a global audience, the same as CNN that my husband works for. Yet the global audience he thinks of is very different to the global audience I think of, or CCTV thinks of. I see China from outside. I see China from 
the perspective of being a Western reporter, always looking out in. She's looking inside out. We come at something from opposite sides. I sometimes see frustration and she sometimes sees opportunity. I think we both learn from each other. She has the benefit of, of knowing the system from the inside, of also getting to know Chinese people in a very close, intimate way. I've been quite lucky because I've been covering the Olympic Games and world's major sporting events since 1989, so a very long time. I've covered London will be my ninth Olympic Games, so I know most of the people at the top of world sport, so I know how to contact them at about and add on one hour. CCTV news has, has just grown so much and improved so much. And I think it plays a really important role. Uh, yes, I understand it's run by the government, but so is the BBC in England, so is the ABC in Australia. Um, you know, that's the, every country has one. Sometimes what you're going to get on CCTV, you will never get anywhere else. You just won't. And so that's a really important voice for the world to be able to hear. Hello, thanks for joining us on Sports Scene. I'm Tracy Holmes in Beijing. Sebastian, thanks so much for your time. And many people outside track and field for uh, I think uh, if someone is coming to China and they'd like to work in Chinese media, I mean really give it a shot because that's what so many people here did. Uh, some people came here with experience in the media from their home countries, but a lot of people started here just on the subs desk and in other places and learnt the craft before moving on to other positions inside Chinese media. And I wouldn't want to tell anybody, you know, when you come to China, if you work in Chinese media, it'll be like this and it'll be like that and it'll be... It won't be because everyone's experience will be different. But I think if you can come in uh, with an open mind and, and want to um, contribute, you will be rewarded equally, you know, in, in friendships and understanding and, and a life experience that you can't do any other way. Right, yeah. Besides her involvement in the right. electronic media, um, Tracy is also a published author. She's now doing doctoral research on the relationship between sports and politics. My argument is that the face of sport is going to change. The power of China as a nation and a rising nation of course it's going to influence sport in, in so many ways. Every sport wants their sport in China, or at least followed by China. That's why you have teams like Real Madrid and Barcelona coming here, you know, LA Galaxy. That's why you've got the NBA here, because everyone wants the Chinese market. It's about quarter past four and I normally head off about now to go and have my late lunch, early dinner break. And um, just by the train station over here, there's a lady that sells cold noodles. Um, it's five kwai, which is, you know, less than a dollar. Um, and they're really beautiful. There's always a crowd, <laughs> I think. People are always interested when they see a foreigner eating street food, but I don't know why, because it's, it's really good. I think that's part of the fun of eating in places like this and uh, being involved in a culture that is so different to your own and to not be afraid of that, you know, to really give it a go and um, just experience it because they're the sorts of memories that you take home with you. When I first came here, I thought, wow, it's so big, it's so dynamic, it's going to take me forever to learn everything about this city. I haven't learned everything about the city, um, but I was surprised at how easy it was to get to know. The 
so many beautiful parks in Beijing and um, in all of the parks, I mean, after we play ping pong, there's um, like that little gym equipment that you can do exercises on and usually there's people here singing Chinese opera, there's other people playing instruments, there's a roller skating on the other side, so there's, there's lots to do, there's lots to see, it's just nice to be part of it. We like coming to the park here to play um, ping pong because, well, first it's just nice to be out in the park. I wasn't even trying for a trick shot. But, you know, so many people come out here and they're all very friendly. They all want to show you how to hold the bat and the different way and how to serve and how to hit backhand. And they're very friendly and it's good. It feels like you're part of the community. One thing the Chinese really enjoy is the outdoors and they're always doing something outside. Um, now they've kind of mixed in these new modern facilities with the old and some people just come and sit and watch and talk and others come and they're playing games or playing competitions, getting together with other people and it just, it, it's nice, you know. I like that they provide you with table tennis court. <laughs> There's no park you could go to in Australia where there'd be free table tennis courts like that, you know? If you're in a place, you want to experience that place and try to experience as best as possible the way the local people live. Uh, otherwise, you might as well just stay home. The foot massage is such a big part of Chinese culture and uh, it's become a very big part of our culture too. <laughs> The first time we went to get a Chinese foot massage in Hong Kong and uh, we thought, oh, we'll try this because all the locals before. are doing it. So we sat down, they put it in the hot bath, then they turned us around started rubbing our feet. <gasps> it was so painful, oh, wasn't it? Yeah. And we went, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> every, so every time funny. they touched it, we just moved yeah. our feet away. Because... <laughs> it's hard. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. I think every, actually every, every place we've been to, you know, we went to uh, Xi'an, for a weekend, three days, to look at the terracotta warriors, you know, various places we go to, everywhere we go, <laughs> we find somewhere on the street where we can get a foot massage. <laughs> you see, I'm taller. <laughs> I'm taller. I'm taller too. I go. It's really interesting because when I find myself talking to people um, back home or in other places who, who have no experience of China, uh, I'm always defending it. <laughs> I think because I've had such a wonderful time here and I think uh, there's a lot that happens here when you live here that you, you just wouldn't know otherwise. Oh yeah, Ken Hao. People have a great thirst for, but what's it really like? You know, what, what are the people like? What's the language sound like? What do they like doing when they're not working? It's, it's obviously a city and a country that is so on the move. And anything that is moving and growing that quickly has, has a multitude of complexities and issues that have to be dealt with. And on the whole, things are dealt with very, very well.